Hi, I'm Al, and on today's Summit Racing Quick Flicks, I'm going to go over valve train geometry, specifically making sure you have the right pushrod length. The first thing that you're going to want to do is grab a few hand tools to be able to complete this project. One of the things that uh, I have with me today is a yardstick, some sort of measuring device, but you want to make sure that you're comfortable with it because you're going to be measuring your push route length. That is very important to have an accurate measuring device. Some other things I have here with me, I have uh, some sockets so that way I can remove the rockers as well as the valve cover. I do have a crankshaft socket because I have removed the dampener as well as the timing cover. We're going to be doing some more work on this engine later on, so I went ahead and removed it. It is not necessary that you remove that. You do need to turn over the engine though, so whatever you have to do to make sure you can turn over the engine, just make sure you do that. I have this socket here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the valve cover here. And we're going to go ahead and start in on our project. So you might wonder, why do I want to take apart the top end of my engine just to check the pushrod length? Well, if you change out your cam and lifters, if you change out your rocker arms, you change valve springs, valves at all, you change out to a larger gasket, a different thickness, it's going to have an effect on the valves and how everything moves and the valve train. So you want to make sure your geometry is correct to make sure that you get max lift or max opening at your 50,000s lift and you want to make sure that everything closes properly so that way you're not losing out on horsepower. So just make sure you take the time, follow these few simple steps, that way you know that everything's correct in your engine build. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my wrench, I'm going to remove the first two, the rocker arms, both the intake and the exhaust from the first cylinder here. Now you do want to make sure that you maintain the same rockers on the exhaust and intake. Next thing I'm going to do, go ahead and I'm going to grab a black permanent marker. Any color that you can see will do, but I'm going to color in the top of these valve stems. And what that's going to do is when I put these back on, there's going to be a pattern worn into that the top of the valve stem, then I'm going to be able to see where the rocker arm, the roller here, the tip, is riding on that valve stem. So I'm just going to cinch these down. Now you do want to follow the proper valve lash techniques as if you were building this engine for the final time. Now we're not going to cover valve lash today, that'll be a different video, but just be sure that you do lash down your valves. All right, so what I've done now is I've removed the intake just so that way I can see down and see the lifters, see the push rods, and make sure everything's moving smoothly. What I'm going to do now is I have my crank socket, my wrench. I'm going to rotate things over a few times. What I want to do is I want to rotate it enough so if, I have, if you have solid lifters, it does wear a pattern into the top of the valve stem with that marker. If you have hydraulic lifters, you want to make sure that the hydraulic lifters get pumped up with, it, with oil so that way you get the proper wear pattern on your valve train. So I'm going to rotate it a few times. And then what I'm going to do, set that socket outside, grab my socket again and go ahead and remove the retaining nut on the first rockers in cylinder number one that I marked. So if you take a look at the top of our valve stem here, you'll see that there's a wear mark right in the middle of the valve stem. That's ideal. That's exactly where you want your wear mark to be. That means it's riding right in the middle of the valve stem, you're going to get max lift and it's going to close properly. Now let's say the wear mark was more towards the exhaust side, towards the outside of the engine. That means your push rod length was a little too long. If the wear mark was towards the valley inside of the engine, your push rod's a little too short. So now how do you find the right length push rod without ordering dozens of sets of push rods? Well, 
you can pick up a push rod length checker uh, by TrickFlow at summitracing.com for under $15. Now you only need one of them. It might take a little longer, but you do want to check both the intake and the exhaust just to make sure you're getting the right length. And I do recommend that you either take the time, check all eight cylinders, or at least check the corners just in case there's any variations in your valve train geometry. What you do is you lengthen the push, push rod checker to the appropriate length that you think you need, run through the steps that I just showed you, turning over the engine, checking the wear pattern. Then once you've found the wear pattern that's right in the middle, take that push, push rod length checker, grab your measuring device, and you're going to measure the overall length of the push rod. Now what that means is you're going to go from the very end, outside to outside. Then you can go to our website and you can try to find the push rod that fits your length perfectly. Now if you have any questions or you can't find the right length push rod on our website, please give us a call. We'll help find the perfect push rod for your project. Like I mentioned before, one of the things we did not cover was valve lash adjustment. And we will definitely be covering that in a later video, so stay tuned. Now if you have any other questions about push rod lengths, camshafts, drivetrain, uh, valve train, any of that stuff, make sure you leave a question in the comments section below. Hit subscribe to stay up to date on our latest Quick Flicks videos. Check out our other videos that we have to offer. Thanks for watching.